Hey everybody, today we're gonna to talk about advanced generation settings. Now there's some debate in the community about whether these are really advanced because a lot of users do use these regularly to control their generations, but I'm gonna warn you that it's a little bit technical and this is one of the areas in AI image generation that requires a lot of experimentation on your specific workflow to figure out what's going to work best for you and your team. First thing I'll do is open up our advanced generation options so we can take a look at those. And you'll see three additional options underneath your model, the scheduler, steps, and the CFG scale setting. Each time you generate an image, you're taking that initial set of noise and passing it through the AI model to produce its best guess of how that might turn into an image that matches your prompt. That process is controlled by a series of mathematical operations that take place over a number of steps. And the approach is called the sampler or scheduler. So these two settings directly manipulate how the denoising process is coordinated and the mathematical mechanisms by which the image is generated. When you open up the scheduler menu, you'll see a lot of options and the list is pretty long. It's intimidating and honestly, to get value out of the tool, you don't really need more than just the ones that work well for your process. It's useful to test this out depending on what you're doing. So if you're working mostly with illustrations and artwork for your creative pipeline, you might find that some work better than others. And the same goes for photography, architecture, texture generation, retail and e-commerce, whatever your purpose is, run a few generations through a handful of the different schedulers and try to get a feeling for what's working best for your pipeline. One important thing to note, each of the schedulers is ultimately working to get to a high quality image. However, each of them, just by the nature of how they work, has a different number of steps to get to that point where we say the image is the best that it's going to get. You can always use more steps if you want to really eke out the maximum amount of detail or quality in each image, but just know that there are diminishing returns and typically the trade-off is going to be efficiency for marginal increases in quality. There's a list in the Invoke documentation that has ideal steps for each scheduler. And you can also honestly just find a ton of that content online. If you do decide to read a little bit more into schedulers, just know that a lot of it is going to end up being math explanations and subjective opinions about which of these is better. Just like with everything creative in life, there's a lot of subjectivity involved. And that's why I recommend just test out the different schedulers and see what works best for your process. Now, there are some real differences between the schedulers. For example, some of the DPM++ schedulers are able to sample information in such a way that it is a little bit better at producing things like skin pores on photographic generations. Some are just a little bit better for vector art styles. So again, you, you just wanna dig in and test them out to see, because that's gonna be the best way to figure out what works for you. So for the sake of demonstrating the differences here, I'll go ahead and set our seed to a fixed seed. I'll paste in a prompt and we'll generate two images, one at 20 steps and one at 50 steps with the DPM++ SDE scheduler. So if we take a look at the images that we've generated, we can see that the one that we generated at 20 steps versus the one that we generated at 50 steps do have different content. They look different. There's a noticeable difference in quality. To some extent, this image is just a little bit unfinished. It's undercooked. Whereas this one has everything kind of detailed out the way we would expect it. And again, this is because the scheduling process needs enough opportunities to look at that set of noise and make the progress towards that final image, adding in those details and really finding all of the places where it can imbue the image with the content that has been prompted. However, you'll also notice that because we added 
30 steps to the process, it took a little bit longer. And I know that I'm speeding up my generations to make it a little bit easier to watch, but you can still feel the massive difference between the two generation times when you add that many steps. So let's bring that back down and see if we can find a happy medium at around 35. I think we maintained a lot of the quality in the face. We can probably debate the shape of the jester's hat, but overall you can see that there's a clear difference in the content of each of these images. And there is often a little bit of tuning and figuring out how to get good quality images in as little steps as possible. The next setting that we'll talk about is the CFG scale setting. This setting is definitely one of the ones that dives a little bit deeper into the technical mechanics of how the image generation process works. And there's a lot of misinformation on the internet. Surprise, surprise. It's often described as a setting that adjusts how much the image should adhere to the prompt that you're putting in. And that isn't exactly the case, but it does highlight one element of the effects of the CFG scale, which is how strictly the terms that you're putting in guide the generation process. When you lower the CFG scale, you're not necessarily telling it don't look like the prompt. You are just allowing it a little bit more room for interpretation. What that means is that by going too high on the CFG scale, you can cause it to over-index on individual terms, increasing the intensity of the image and making it look a lot worse than if you have the CFG scale at a reasonable level. This setting often needs to be tuned on a per model basis are trained in such a way that you may need to increase or decrease this to get to a point where you're getting a good mix of your prompt guiding the generation and also allowing it the freedom to pull in other concepts that it needs to in order to create that image. But a good range typically to start your experimentation, if you're going to change this from the defaults, is around 5 to 7.5. I'll go ahead and generate an image at 3.5. 5.5, 7.5, and then 10. And we can compare the differences in quality. So at our lowest CFG scale, we can see that the texture of the painting is a very pleasing kind of oil painting look. The gesture concept is pulled in, but there's maybe an argument that this could just be any elf. So as we increase that to 5.5, we see a little bit more of the gesture concept coming in on the hats. We see that eyebrow raising a little bit more. When we increase to 7.5, our jester hat has truly split into two, look, taking on that jester-like look. Our eyebrow is raised even higher. And at the highest levels that we typically would recommend of 10, we even have some face paint going on. This is truly a jester, and it's pulling in a lot of the concepts of our prompt. Again, there is not a right answer to the CFG scale to use because it depends on what you're going for. This image is wildly different than this image, but they both have a place, they both have a purpose, and one could argue that for your process, this might work better than this. The reason we focus on these being advanced tools is because you're able to generate high quality images without moving these around, but these do give you a lot of control in developing a very customized pipeline that is optimized for what you need to generate for your creative work. As always, we're excited to see what you do with these tools. Make sure to like the video if you learned something and join us on Discord to share how you're using it in your work.